I love it. The Leafs are playing hard. They're playing fierce. They're scoring goals. They're playing excellent defensively. They're getting goaltending. Everything is going their way. Well-oiled machine, baby. What did I tell you? And now all they got to do is win a fourth playoff game. Okay, I don't want to be hypocritical here, but I'm going to need you to lower your voice. Let's go. Why not? The Toronto Maple Leafs. I guess my brand is a yell and scream. Ah, I don't script these. Are the Leafs all right? So what you get is from the heart. Welcome to LFR. Puppies, buddy, we're gonna do three. B. Jack Campbell, stop them all. Stop them all. Oh, that was a good rebound. That was a good rebound. Stop them all. Ah, it's hard to do what he does, right? Here, for Galch. Forgot, yeah, empty netter. How about Alex Galchenyuk leaves win four to nothing over the Montreal Canadiens in game four of their first round Stanley Cup playoff series, and the Toronto Maple Leafs take a 3 1 series lead. Okay, I don't want to get overly dramatic. Hey, any of you who've been watching my videos for a long time, you know I don't get that way. You know I don't get that way. Look at all the stuff on the wall. Look at all the stuff. You don't see any Oscars. You don't see any Golden Globes. Not even a Screen Actors Guild. And I don't agree with contract negotiations during the playoffs. I think it's a distraction. I think it's unnecessary. That being said, I couldn't help but notice that Alex Galchenyuk is a pending unrestricted free agent and. <laughs> Yo, I messed this table up. Alex, on top of your contract, I'll also throw in a diagonal table. Alex Galchenyuk is a leaf. William Nylander is a leaf. Jason Spitz is a leaf. Joe Thornton is a leaf. And Jack Actual Campbell is a leaf. Kyle, Kyle, Kyle. We mustn't get ahead of ourselves. There was a game to talk about, and it was only game four. The Leafs up 3 1 in this series. Let's talk about how we got there. Game four taking place in Montreal. Hoping to make it the last home game in Montreal this season. A little bit of lineup change action for the Leafs. Travis Dermott coming in. Hey, that's cool. Adam Brooks coming in. Hey, that's cool. Wait a sec. Who's coming out? Riley Nash comes out, and I know what the goal was bringing him here, but it's not unreasonable at this point. He's struggled a little bit to get acclimated, and also Adam Brooks was really good in the limited time that he played, especially down the stretch. Dermot coming in for Sandine is a little puzzling, and I'm going to chalk that up to Keefe just wants to get everyone in because he's hoping for a long run of it here. I don't think Rasmus Sandine has done a thing to come out of the lineup, and if I was him, I'd be frustrated, and I know a lot of Leaf fans were frustrated, and I certainly would not have taken Sandine out of the lineup. However, let me throw this out there. You want a deep playoff run? Yeah? You want to go on and win the Stanley Cup, huh? Okay, well, if replacing Rasmus Sandine with Travis Dermott is what sinks your entire team, you were never going to get there anyway. The other storyline heading into the game, uh-oh, it's the second half of a back-to-back. -back. Is Jack Campbell going to play? <laughs> here, here, here. Can you send this clip to the past? Just send, send it real quick. Yeah, yeah, he's gonna play, and yeah, it's gonna be pretty good. It's amazing. Carey Price doesn't play an NHL game for a month heading into the playoffs, and there's no question in Montreal. Is it gonna be Jake Allen? Jake Allen wasn't even bad. Is it gonna be Jake Allen in game four? There was no question. So, first period, it's a bit of a chess match. Kind of low event, both teams feeling each other out a bit. Kokaniemi takes a slash like two minutes in. That's not going to help Habs fans feel better about the officiating. Penalty drawn there by Mitch Marner. Leafs power play can't get it done, and right away everyone's like, Are you kidding? That's why you should have kept Sandine in! And like, fair play that Sandine was good on the power play, but like, I actually thought that power play was good. This is the problem with the Leafs power play and the perception. Now, I, I actually don't think they've been that bad in this series. They haven't been wonderful, but they haven't been that bad. They've been at least middle of the pack. But because they were so bad heading into the playoffs, they're going to have to score like two goals a game for a few months before fans go, oh yeah, it's mediocre. Much later in the period, TJ Brody taking a slash on Eric Stahl. I actually, uh, uh, I don't know. If you're going to take a penalty, this one was worth it. Wasn't the greatest play in the offensive zone. It's amazing how much of the Leafs' defensive troubles have come from misplays in the offensive zone. Brody has to rush to get back. It's almost an odd man rush, so he slashes stall, takes the penalty, but probably also takes away a pretty good scoring chance. And even though a key penalty killer is in the box again... Leafs kill it off. Then almost at the end of the first period, the Leafs take a too many men on the ice call, and it was a blatant one. Nylander to the box to serve that one. And the penalty killers look great so far in this series, and it looked great on this one too, killing it off. I know the way to get to Carnegie Hall is practice, but maybe knock it off! And that's just looking at the penalties, what I really had an eye on in this period. And I gotta tell you, it's been a theme pretty much since game one. It's the Leafs kind of beating the Montreal Canadiens at their own game. It's kind of low 
event hockey. The shots were 9-6 in favor of the Leafs by the end of the first period. But in the first five minutes, there's the Jason Spezza breakaway. There's the Matthews and Marner two-on-one. I actually liked Marner's uh, idea to shoot there. Execution kind of flubbed, and it's Carey Price. But I like that Marner seemed to be shooting the puck a lot more in this game. But the Habs' whole thing is, all right, we're going to grind you down. It's going to be low event hockey. And also, we're going to stretch out the ice, and we're going to try to get as many odd man rushes and breakaways as possible. And after the first few minutes, I'm like, okay, so play like the Leafs? And as the period sort of wore on, you see the Leafs go back to what they had in games two and three, just crashing the net. I have loved that about this team through four games, the versatility. But alas, even though they're playing well, they head to the second period, neither team has a goal. Which to me, in this matchup, favors the Habs every single time. Then the second period begins, and viewer discretion is advised. Jake Muzzin with the puck in the Leafs zone, backhands it out, and Alexander Kerfoot collects it. The Leafs ex. Expose the Habs defensively here. Here's how it starts. Kerfoot's flying in. He's going in on Edmondson. Jeff Petrie's there as well. He's guarding Alex Galchenyuk. Nylander's flying in, but he's got Nick Suzuki with him, and there's another Habs defender as well. First and foremost, the offside. Kerfoot and Galchenyuk kind of crisscross, and they are very, very nearly offside. Uh, from the view here, it looks like they're onside, but it is very close. I will say this to any Habs fan who might be upset about that. There are offside reviews, and there are obviously cameras. Ber Bergevin hasn't been shy to call down. I've said this before, this isn't just a Habs thing. If it's clearly offside, you can challenge it. And because the offside review exists, I don't feel bad for your team if they miss it. In fact, the only times I've really gotten mad is if there's a challenge that I wish Keefe had made. But this is lucky for Galchenyuk that this is this year and not last year, because now that the blue line goes to the ceiling, that's onside last year, we'd review that, it'd probably be off. But anyway, back to the actual hockey. I just don't understand how the Habs let this happen. Kerfoot and Galchenyuk switch up, but Galchenyuk just walks through the two Habs defenders like he knows the doorman. And on top of that, Nylander's flying in. He's working his tail off. Nick Suzuki's just sort of gliding. Kerfoot manages to get Galchenyuk the pass, but it's a bit tricky, so he's just like, I I'm just gonna try something. Pats it kind of underneath his legs to Nylander and... <laughs> Sorry, just let me pause the video for a sec. Wayfair. William Nylander with the finish, but Alexander Galchenyuk possessed by a demon! Certainly not possessed by a demon, because that's how the Habs got into that position in the first place. Holy cow! Listen, a goal is a goal is a goal. I don't care if it's a weak floater from the point that glances off of someone's bum and in, but sometimes you see a goal and you go, oh! My team's winning tonight. No need to watch the rest. I certainly will, but there's no need because they're winning tonight. Because did you see that? Alex Galchenyuk's got like, what, eight assists as a member of the Toronto Maple Leafs and two of them are between the legs? I, just put your pen through the contract. Perhaps a wee bit lost through the fact that that pass was so great. William Nylander, four goals in four games. What if I told you it gets even better? You wanna run through a wall? You wanna put your fist through a table? From Sportsnet's Luke Fox, been hearing William Nylander's teammates say nice things about him for years, but this observation tonight from Jason Spezza stands out. He's more vocal on the bench. You can tell he's really taken a leadership role with John Down. He stepped up. Hello, yes, I would like to order one. I would die for William Nylander, please. But anyway, come now, let's pull ourselves together. There's still quite a bit of this ice hockey match left to play. I don't know what that accent was. I'm a disgrace to my ancestors, I know. So just putting a little bow on that goal, you might look at that and go, okay, well, how many, like, between the legs passes are we gonna see? Like, that's just a lucky one from the Leafs. That is absolutely them making their own luck. They exposed the Habs' defense and they created a scoring chance. The Habs did have a scoring chance of their own not long after, and I wanted to highlight it because it's not great, but it's also better than it could have been. Now, Corey Perry and Eric Stahl, perhaps not the most fleet of foot anymore, but I said this at the beginning of the series, they're smart and they're crafty still. The hockey brain never left. And not for the first time in the series, Eric Stahl creates a rush opportunity for the Montreal Canadiens. Yes, Stahl does sneak behind Bogosian, leading to a, essentially a breakaway. But Bogosian is hard enough on him that he makes the opportunity difficult and Jack Campbell is able to make the save. That's, that's good. The part I wanted to highlight is this from Travis Dermott. Eric Stahl has enough of a step on Zach Bogosian here that he could be a decoy for Corey Perry who could snipe it on Jack Campbell like Nick Suzuki did on that play where we criticized Riley in game three. But because Travis Dermott is so aggressive, he either forces him to the outside or forces him to make a quick pass. To me, that's another example of, oh, the Leafs a little bit lucky to escape there, maybe but to me they made their own luck in that situation by playing a bad scenario well. 
Does that make sense? Listen, the ideal amount of shots on goal to allow is zero, but how often does that happen? The other team is gonna break through, it's about making it difficult for them, and I thought Bogosian and Dermot, while kinda getting caught here, did a great job. And that allows the Leafs to continue to have the lead. Not long after, Tyler Toffoli with a really good chance at the side of the net, Campbell stopping that, I thought there was a little bit of light to shoot at, that, that one had me scared. After a bit of pushback from the Montreal Canadiens, later in the second period, this must have been halfway through a line change, because all of a sudden, it's Alexander Galchenyuk and Jason and Spezza away on a two-on-one. Galchenyuk with the puck coming in on Joel Edmondson. Move over, Andrea Bargnani, because there's another Toronto athlete with a sauce sponsorship. Galchenyuk with six sauce special slashes at it. Top corner. The Leafs are up two nothing. So to answer your sarcastic little question, there, folks, yeah. They rebuilt him! That, of course, is in reference to an article that some fans, including Habs fans, made a little bit of fun of, talking about how the Leafs rebuilt Alexander Galchenyuk. Listen, maybe it's a little dramatic from both sides, but to quote, uh, I believe it's Linus from Charlie Brown and the Charlie Brown Christmas special, I never thought he was such a bad little tree. Maybe all he needed was a little love. Now, if Habs fans were gonna get mad at anything, it's about to happen. Ben Chirot gets the cross-checking call on Austin Matthews. I don't know what to tell you about that one because there have been exactly 400 of those cross-checks going both ways, but the refs, I guess, trying to crack down. Now, here's the issue. The Leafs power play not doing so good. The Habs about to turn it the other way, and they're about to get a three-on-two with Paul Byron as the trailer, and he's pretty quick. And I don't think it was a dive at all. I think that dude was tripped. As soon as I saw it, I'm like, uh-oh. He's upset, there's no call, and the Leafs get to take the puck the other way. And believe it or not, it's Joe Thornton of all people just deciding it's Joe Thornton time and getting the zone entry, taking the puck into the Hab zone. It's no offense, but how many guys on the Leafs does he beat in a race? He drops it back and attacks the net. Kerfoot gets it, gives it to Spezza. Spezza with a pass so good it should have been called the goal. This should be a Jason Spezza goal that happened to go off Joe Thornton. Hey, hey, check this out. You want to know how I know you're worried about Jason Spezza? That's how. That, that's how. That's how I know you're worried about Jason Spezza. Try as he did, even Price didn't expect that to happen. Holy cow, what a pass from Spezza. What a tip from Joe Thornton, too. Like, that that came in hot, that thing. Missile of a pass, but he gets just enough of it to tip it in, and Joe Thornton becomes the oldest Toronto Maple Leaf to ever score a Stanley Cup playoff goal. 3-0 Leaf lead. Second period continues. Matthews with that nice spinorama shot on Price. Almost squeaks through the five hole. And then during the stream chat, I did a stream on Sportsnet's YouTube channel during this game, and I'm gonna do it for game five as well tomorrow, I said, watch, the refs, that they're gonna go to intermission, they're gonna see that missed call on Byron, and there's gonna be a makeup call. And I was wrong, they didn't wait till intermission. Adam Brooks and Brett Kulak get into a, you know, sort of a scuffle behind the Habs net, and Brooks is the only one who gets the penalty. I'm not complaining, but I am asking why. <laughs> Leafs managed to kill it off, Carnegie Hall, practice, and all that, we head to the second intermission. Leafs three goal lead heading into the third. What could go wrong? Nothing, surely. And it's certainly not to say the Habs aren't buzzing. Brendan Gallagher did hit the post late there. That had my heart coming out of my chest. In the third, Brendan Gallagher probably playing his best game of the series so far. Great tip in front. I think it hit Campbell in the mask. Zach Hyman with the breakaway. Carey Price equal to it. And then really after that, like, where were the Habs dangerous? Thornton even takes a bad tripping call on Eric Stahl. That, that's a gift from the hockey gods. And the Habs just go, meh. The Habs do outshoot the Leafs 14-4 to in the third period. I'm not liking what I'm seeing in the score effects region, uh, especially games three and four. If I'm not mistaken, in the past two third periods, both of which the Leafs were winning, they were outshot by the Habs 29 to six. Let me just check here. Some of the, oh yeah, it says it's not good. But they really keep the Habs from being dangerous. The, the, the most dangerous plays were the Hyman breakaway, the Hyman empty netter, and Matthews! <laughs> That was the most impressive play of the period from the Montreal Canadiens. Corey Perry whacking Austin Matthews' empty net attempt out of the air with his stick. And I couldn't help but look at those and go, oh boy, is that gonna cost this team? And Alexander Galchenyuk says, don't worry boys, after all, I play for the Toronto Maple Leafs! Empty netter, thanks for coming out. Jack Campbell finalizes the shutout on the second half of a back-to-back. -back. And the Leafs take a commanding... 3-1 lead back home to Toronto. Let's hope we never have to go back to Montreal again this season. A 32 save shutout for Campbell. I, I gotta say I'm surprised because in my opinion, I know the Montreal Canadiens didn't do well over the course of the season on the second half of a back-to-back, -back, but the second half of a back-to-back -back in this playoff scenario, I think favors the team that is down in the third period. 
and I'm going off of game four last year against Columbus where the Leafs scored three goals in three minutes. No sir, no ma'am. 32 saves for Jack Campbell. And remember when you thought he wasn't going to play? <laughs> Questions. Can we give Dermot some love? I think he had a great game after sitting for the last three. We can absolutely give Dermot some love. I've said it before, I'll say it again. It's not like I love that the Leafs are scratching the guys that they're scratching, or at least when they're fully healthy, they're scratching the guys that they're scratching. It's that I have so much faith in their depth. Like, we used to think we had depth, and we were wrong. Strong team lines one through four, but a lot of the guys on the third and fourth line, they weren't really role players. Now the Leafs have at least five lines of guys you can stick almost anywhere. Galchenyuk was a healthy scratch in game one. And it depends what your philosophy is. Sheldon Keefe was an idiot for doing that, or or, wow, he was motivated. Same with Dermot. And you could argue same with Sandine. It keeps them both hungry, and it keeps them both fighting for a job. This team is good, man. There aren't many places to hide. Everybody stay calm! Aiden, that's not a question, and also no! Should we be worried about 16 and 34, that's Marner and Matthews, not scoring as much as they've been expected to? You know, I watch them, and they're getting their moments for sure, and Matthews did score, and Marner's got a few assists. Like, they're not doing horribly. But what if part of the reason other guys are scoring, other players are able to contribute, is because the Montreal Canadiens are focusing so much energy on that line? You can't tell me Matthews isn't a giant focus of the Montreal Canadiens. After every single whistle, they're going after him. They're grabbing at the back of his jersey, and he's smiling. And they're like judo flipping him onto the ice, and he's smiling. And Leaf fans gotta give Marner some credit for crying out loud. We've been talking about how good the penalty kill has been. Marner has been a key part of it. How must this all feel for Galch? This is such a good question. I love questions that make me think. And I think I found it. Alex Galchenyuk felt the same after that performance the way Adele feels the day she releases an album. You know? Maybe. I don't know. Let me know what you think. Can you name the episode Ring the Camp Bell? Bell. Camp Bell. You know, I was about to criticize this title and then I remembered that every time I upload a video, I get to the part where there's supposed to be a title and I go, oh right, there's a title. Like it's the first time I've ever seen that option. I don't know what the title's gonna be. What is it? What did I make it? I don't know what it's gonna be right now. What did I end up making it? Is it good? Did I do good? <laughs> 32 saves. I know Jack Campbell did good. My actual goodness, this guy. <laughs> Folks, spent a lot of energy over the last 48 hours. That is it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. Click like if you liked this video. Click subscribe if you really liked it. Tell all your friends, Sportsnet YouTube channel, tomorrow night, game five in Toronto. The Toronto Maple Leafs sing it on the Montreal Canadiens. The Leafs with a chance to advance to the second round for the first time since 2004. Get it.